Midjourney allows you to create consistent characters, and both Runway and Pika allow you to take an image, combine it with an MP3, and create a lip sync movie. It's not quite perfect yet, but it's still pretty cool. When you start factoring in things like multi-motion brush, you can really be more intentional about the types of AI movies that you're creating. So it's really exciting. Let's take a look at how it's done. Now I want this to be a complete tutorial, so I'm gonna go through the process of how you generate the consistent characters in Midjourney. And there's some chapters in the description, so if you already know how to do that, you can just jump ahead to the Pika or Runway parts of this as well. All right, so today we're gonna to generate two consistent characters in Midjourney using character reference images. We're gonna have those characters change locations and cinematic styles using style reference images. Then we'll put our two characters in the same scene using inpainting. We'll add some camera motion, and then we'll get everyone talking with lip sync using both Pika and Runway. At the end, I'll show you the movie we made. Okay, I did a time travel movie with consistent characters using Gen 2 and Wave to Lip about eight months ago, and it's a really good way to quickly put a character in a variety of locations. So we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna do everything in Discord because currently everyone has access to Discord and not everyone has access to the alpha. All right, so the first thing we need to do is create our characters. So we'll go to Imagine. I'm gonna paste my prompt in there. I'm not too concerned about um, the aspect ratio now. I just wanna focus on the face. I wanna focus on the character. So you just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, depending on which one you wanted to upscale. So let's say we like this third one here. We could just click upscale here. It will generate a higher resolution image of that character. And then we'll click here, right click, copy the link. So once I have that link, I'm gonna go and type a new prompt in. So I'm gonna keep this easy and just say a medieval queen. And then you go dash dash C ref. So this is the command that says, okay, this next URL that I put in here is gonna be the character. So we're gonna paste that in there and it's gonna be really long and we're not gonna worry about that right now because it's gonna shorten it in a second. Um, and all I'm doing now is just putting one of these in so I can get the URL I'm gonna get in a second. I'll show you what I mean. This URL here, after the CREF, it has the MJ run and this weird code. I'm gonna save this. For my project, I have this little character list here. So I'm not using all of these characters, but I am using some of them. These are the ones that I thought like, I may wanna come back to them um, at some point. So I have like different characters that I like. I have different styles that I like. Um, and I can just keep these nice and handy in a Google Doc. I also have my script here too, so I can keep track of what character one and what character two say. That's gonna come in later. All right, so this is the character that I generated that I, I like a lot more. So I'm gonna use her for the time traveler. And then I started by trying to put her in different scenarios. So at first I kept it really generic. Like I would say an interstellar astronaut and I would get images like this, which is, it looks like her, but this is not really um, anything that like, she's part of the actual ro rocket ship here. So you still have to prompt, you still have to pre do pretty good prompts. Um, you'll get little things like this where it turns their heads around. Her head is backwards, but it's her still. Tried some other characters. I thought this is a good character for the guy who keeps getting it wrong. And then I created some different styles. So I would just type in imagine and I would come up with different scenarios that I like. So this is like a medieval castle. I'm really just looking for textures and colors. There are no people in these shots. They're just sort of like the ambiance, the vibe that I'm going for. And you can see here's an example of the character that I made in that style. So to combine a character and style, we're first gonna write our prompt, and then we'll add an aspect ratio if we don't want it to be square. So I want it to be 16 by nine. Then we'll add the character reference, which is the URL for that character. And I'm referencing this character. And then we'll go sref, which is the style reference, and that's this URL. So it's, it's gonna take this prompt, put this character in it, and give it this style, and make it this aspect ratio. Let's see how it does. And then I'm gonna do another one that takes place in Egypt, also with the flip phone. Same aspect ratio, same character, but now we're changing the style up. So now we're gonna be in Egypt. So I'm changing the prompt to have some language about Egypt, and then I'm adding this other Egyptian style. So now you can see, you know, they're similar enough. Like it's not exactly the same person, but like it's pretty, 
pretty close. Um, and the nice thing is that we can recognize her. So we can recognize her in this Egyptian um, atmosphere as opposed to these other. Like these, these look similar. Like if you saw all of these, they look the same. There might be some slight differences between them, but it's more or less the same character. Now, one thing you might be noticing is that the outfits that she's wearing are very similar to this outfit, this sort of like scoop neck kind of thing that she's wearing. Um, and you might not want that. So there's two ways to do this. So one is that you could upscale. So let's, let's upscale this one and then we'll vary the region. So we'll just highlight a section here and then we'll say a flowing gown worn in ancient Egypt with jewelry and ornamentation. There's probably a better way to do that, but that's what I'm gonna do. So now there's some different styles that kind of match the background or the, the ambiance a little bit more. I'm not gonna use any of these in particular, but I just wanna show you how you can change the outfits because it really does stick pretty closely to the character reference costume. Whatever they're wearing as the character reference, it, it seems to bring that along with it, at least in my experience. Now, the other thing you can do is, is at the character reference level. So this is the character I created, but I didn't like this shirt. So I decided to vary the region on it like this, and then just change the prompt in here to different things until I found one that I liked. So, you know, we get these different types of suits and sweaters and things like that. So I just kind of played around until I found one that I liked. And eventually I was like, I think this one's pretty good. So I'll go here and go copy a link. I'll create a new image just to get the character reference URL. There might be an easier way to do this, but this is how I do it. So I'll just say a time traveler in a jungle. I'm not going to do any other kind of reference. I just basically want to get a short URL for this one. So this is all I need. And then I'm going to go back to my little spreadsheet. You don't have to do the spreadsheet, but I think it's helpful. And so instead of this one, I'm going to go insert image, insert image into cell, link, paste it in there. So I've got my two characters here now. I've got some styles that I've already created. This is the time machine control room. Then there's different places that they're going to go. One thing I've noticed is that it seems to keep the framing of the character. So a lot of times you'll you'll get more close-ups because this is the character reference that we have. So one thing that you can do is you can zoom out. So when you find one that you like, just click the zoom out to X. So I've got these four and I'm going to upscale one of those. And because I've upscaled it now, I can pan down. I can click this pan down button and it'll it'll fill in this area down here. And so now we have these, um, you know, more of like a torso shot. Um, I tried to play around with like giving him a pot belly. Didn't really work out, but essentially this is a way of giving you a shot that looks similar to this, like where you have more of their body in the frame, but it's the same exact person. It's literally the same exact in painted shot. That's a tip because you can do multiple character reference images. So you could do this portrait shot and you could also do, you know, a full body shot, even if you wanted to. So I mentioned we're gonna take two characters and put them in the same shot. As far as I know, you can only do one character reference per image. You can have multiple images in that character reference, but it can only be one character. So you'll get a shot that looks something like this, like it's her talking to her clone almost, or her sister who looks very much like her. So this is actually good. Now that we have this shot um, of the two characters talking to each other, we can go in here to very region and then we can just use this little tool to kind of paint out this first one. I'm going to try and get close so I can still get the sense that there's like a head here and that there's elbows on a table. And then what I'm going to do is take, um, I'm going to take another character that I created for this one and put that character in here. So I'm just going to say a person at a table in a Paris cafe. And I'm going to replace this character reference with this other one. You can see it starting to paint that other character in there. And there we go. And there's little things, you know, about each of them. So some are better than others, but still we've taken two different characters that we've generated and in painted one of them into a scene. We could have this as our establishing shot and then cut back and forth between them. What a great use of in painting and consistent characters. I'm learning so much today. I love it. All right. So now let's go to Pika. We're going to start on the explore page. We're going to click image or video. I added an image here and now we're going to click lip sync and that's going to bring us over to this page. Okay. All of these are voices that come from 11 labs. So you can, if you may be familiar with some of these or you've heard them before, um, I don't love any of them for the characters that I have, but you would choose the character that you want. 
And then for me, I have this character style script. So I can just copy some of the script from here, paste it in here, and click generate voice. So if we don't like that voice, we'll click the back button, load a different voice in there, and then pick a different voice. So once we have this, so you see we've got a five second clip here, we're gonna attach and continue, but uh-oh, look what happens. We can only choose three seconds here. The other way to do that is to use an MP3, but we're still, even with the MP3, we're still stuck to that three seconds. So the way we can get around that is by attaching a video. Now there's two ways that we can do the video. One is to attach the image, generate it, and then extend it. So I did that here with, I've got a three second clip, and then I turned it into, I added four seconds to it, so now it's seven seconds. But you can see it really, I mean, this is the problem. This is why everyone is going bonkers around Sora, because even though it's a consistent character that we're bringing in, she doesn't remain consistent in, in the Pika generation. So the way around that is to make our own little video of her. So what I did is I went into CapCut, I took the still image in CapCut, brought it in, I added this effect to kind of give it a little bit of a wobble, and then I did a zooming effect to kind of slowly zoom in on her. Um, so I'm not worried that she's not talking yet because I'm gonna take that video, bring it in here, got my video there, I'm gonna click lip sync, and then I'm gonna add my audio and then attach and continue. And now you see I've got a full six seconds here. That's a nice little cap cut hack for generating longer lip sync videos with temporal consistency in Pika. So the other thing is like, if you create a video with Pika um, and they have the speech and you wanna add four seconds, you can't lip sync onto the four seconds. So you're, all, you're basically stuck with the one you have, you can resync it so you can change it that way, but it's changing this first one. So you can't add four seconds of dialogue to a lip sync video in the same way you can extend other Pika videos. This time, instead of creating a video in CapCut, I brought the image into stable video and did this orbit camera move. The camera motion and the lip sync combined really helps sell it as a real video, I think. Camera motion and lip sync are a good match. All right, let's take one of our mid-journey images and bring it into Runway. So we're going to start on the Runway homepage, click Start Generating, or we're going to go to Gen 2. We're going to upload our file here. And then what I'm going to do is go to the Motion Brush option. And I'll just paint the background here. I'll choose the Auto Detect. This is one way to do it. We can do a camera control in a second too, but this is one way to add motion, is if we highlight this castle and then have it move to the right. And then let's just add some um, ambient noise to her hair. Let's um, brush in her hand and have it move up so it's kind of moving closer to her face. And then let's paint her body and have it move down. So kind of like, you know, actually, let's just have her shoulder move down. Um, and that way she'll kind of have her hand go up and her shoulder go down and her hair will have some ambient noise. Let's see how this one turns out. Um, so we're not adding any lip sync here. What we're doing is taking our image and we're adding some animation. Then we're gonna take that video and lip sync to that video. All right, so this is our time travel guy who uh, presses the wrong button when he's not supposed to. And I love that I can actually, um, I, can, I can generate an image where he's pointing at a button. And now with motion brush, I can just kind of paint his hand in there and have it move that direction. So he's actually pressing the button. And then I can just paint his head and have it like tilt up a little bit. Then I'll paint in these dials and give them some ambient noise. So hopefully they'll glow or maybe spin and we'll give that a try. So when those are done, I can go back to the homepage and click on generative audio. And then I'm gonna upload my audio files. This is an MP3 that I generated in 11 labs. So I'm gonna upload that one. Since I generated the motion in Gen 2, I can click browse. Um, but if I had done it in stable video or something else, I could click upload. All right, so that's the export that I have from Gen 2. I'm gonna bring that in. It's gonna detect a face. And um, you can see his hand move. I, I don't love this one, so I'm gonna redo it. Um, but just to show you how we would lip sync, um, we've got the audio up there, there's the video, and then we generate it.
So I'm probably going to redo this one because her face really changes a little too much. So she is a consistent character in the image, but um, over the course of those four seconds, she loses all that clarity. And I think that's because there's too much motion going on. So what I'm going to do is instead of using the motion brush, I'm going to use a camera movement. All right, so there was a bunch of stuff in here where I motion brushed in. I'm going to cancel all of that out. I'm going to still do her hand moving up um, and I'll still add some ambient noise to her hair. And then what I'm going to do is go over here to the camera control. So that's the motion brush. So that's adding some motion specifically to her. But now I want to affect the overall uh, image. So what I'm going to do is go to the camera control and I'll do a pan. And I like this little thing on the side that lets you kind of go left and right. You can see how your change here is gonna affect the final output. So I really like this feature. All right, so once I have that one looking the way I want it to, I can sync it up with the MP3 from Eleven Labs and it'll look and sound something like this. We used motion brush, camera control, and lip sync for this one. So here's an image, here's some style references. Here's what that looks like when you combine the character and the style reference. Here's adding some motion to that image. Here's the voice that we're going to choose. And then here's everything all together. It's a lot of steps, but it gives you so much creative control. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please be sure to subscribe. All right, so here's the time travel movie we made with mid-journey consistent characters talking with Pika and Runway Lip Sync. Who are you? What are you doing in Time Dispatch? Oh, uh... I'm the new time travel dispatcher. Have you ever operated a time machine before? Um, well, I completed the training. Fine, can you send me back 20 years? Let's see, the rewind button is... You've sent me too far in the past. This is like 50 years ago. I think I had caps lock on, let me try again. Again, nope. This is like ancient Egyptian times. Sorry, let me make a quick adjustment. Not even close. Can you just bring me back? I'll show you how to do it. Ah, I got it. I need to hit the transport button. No! Ah! No, wait! No! I wasn't supposed to hit the transport button, was I? What sounds good for dinner? Brontosaurus or woolly mammoth? <laughs>